I just want to roll it back to a second just to talk about uh, the browser mode on uh, the test. Uh, I feel like that is such a cool feature that not, as you said, not a lot of people know about before it, the only thing, the only way you could do that was by using karma basically, which is like an ancient web testing technology. So a lot of changes have happened in like the testing ecosystem in JavaScript in the past few years. What do you think about them? Do you think Jest has gone off to a pasture somewhere and we should all move to the test or should we all be writing everything in Playwright? Yeah, th there's definitely been a lot of uh, development, a lot of progress. I'm very stoked to be a JavaScript engineer right now, even AI things considered, whatever you fear there, it's genuinely the best state we've been, especially if, if you've been like developing 10 years ago, 20 years ago, right now is just fantastic. We have so many great tools. We have so many great standards and it's only going to get better. I'm really excited about testing realm in particular. Like I think Cypress, like a, like years ago, it was a really good introduction to a more accessible end-to-end -end testing compared to Selenium. And now then there's like tools like Playwright. And I think like we, we follow a very similar pattern there in the tooling, people trying to come up with a more approachable ways to adopt different testing strategies. So like Playwright was a really, it still is a very nice browser automation tool. And I use it a lot and I love it. And, and a similar thing happened to Jest. I was absolutely astonished when I picked up Jest, I don't know, six years ago. I, I don't know what it had been. And now I understand that it does have some shortcomings. It mostly a little bit falling behind with time. Like it still doesn't have nice support for ESM. You can still do that. But the way you do that, it's not something I want to do. As, as an engineer, I want to have a test. I want to write it in, in a language that's supported, that's there. And I want to have it run. I don't want to be spending time on configuration. You can count me lazy on that because because there's much more things to configure in the areas that matter. Like ESM support, touch group support, those things must be native. It's, it's just period. And, and, and that's where a lot of great improvements were in, in the Vue ecosystem and especially in Vitas that we get now. It's just fantastic. Like the, the whole idea of being built on top of Vite and having this compilation aspect and then having the test experience, which is very familiar to Jest. I migrated two rather big projects, like hundreds of tests from Jest to Vitas. It was a great experience. It was fast. The tests gotten faster, which I love. And there's a lot of tiny things that Vitas just does better behind the scenes and more apparently to you that I just share. And, and, and it just clicks with me. And that's why I'm teaching all, everything that, that you find in Epic Web using Vitas because it's a fantastic tool. And now with the addition with browser mode, it just gets even better. I, I've been excited and then sold on the browser mode like for months. We've been talking with the team at Vitas uh, about it. It was really great. Now I finally have a chance to try it out, to integrate it into, into the workshop, to, to test something with it. And I think more people should try using it. It's really a nice idea they're combining the uh, compilation of Vt, so you have all the modern syntax all typescript you have everything not just that by the way but also you're building your app you're building your test the same way you build your app which is like the selling point of building things on top of Vt, which i honestly didn't know i talked with anthony from the Vt ecosystem and, and he just explained it to me and i was quite impressed that actually makes sense again you want to have as close context as possible so you want to have they say network code, you want to have the same compilation, obviously, although there are some differences under the hood in Vite, but it's still, you can disregard those because those are implementation details of Vite. And I love that you have this consistent compilation. Then you have Vtest on top, which provides this familiar testing framework experience. You have describe blocks after each, every hook, everything you've been used to. And then you have on top of this, on top of this, a browser automation now. So you can hook your browser, which can be Playwright. I believe they support different browser providers. It can be another kind of browser. And you can have this, all three components working together. So you can get your code, isolated code, which is not an end-to-end -end test, which is just your component compiled with Vtest and then, sorry, compiled with Vite and then served in the browser and have Vite as a layer that interfaces with a browser, something similar to Playwright but done a little differently. And this is where I see a lot of integration testing going forward. I want us to slowly sunset things like GSDOM and browser-like environments and embrace browser automation, because I know a lot of people still have the stigma. It's slow. It's not nice. It's going to take a lot of time. It will be slower than integration tests. Of course, like nobody's trying to say that it's not, but it is at the fastest, most accessible state it's ever been. Like it's not Selenium from 10 years before, it's something completely new. And 
at least in my experience, and everybody I talk to, like they actually have quite performant test suits in Playwright, in Cypress. There is some elements that you have to be aware of, something that you can contribute to, to degrade or improve your experience, but the tools themselves are really fast. I think there's just no excuse to pay quite a big price actually for using browser-like environments when the price of, of this spawning the browser, of this automation is much lower. As, as I have, I've been thinking about this for a long time from these discussions around performance and testing, and perhaps maybe it's a silly thing to say, but I get this phrase that performance shouldn't be your top consideration in testing because the most performant test is the one that doesn't exist, the one that you didn't write. That's the fastest test. So to me, of course, I want my test you to be fast. I want the fast feedback loop, but it shouldn't come at a cost of compromising my environment. Of, the, of compromising the code I'm testing. I want to be testing the same code. And the tools like, like Vitas browser mode actually allow me to do that. Like, uh, running the browser, having my testing experience there, it's really cool. I'm excited about that. Yeah, g getting rid of JS DOM is getting rid of a pit of barbs that <laughs> really has never given me value and has only given me pain. So I, I welcome it. <laughs> oh yeah. I think this this like plays well into the overall like mocking conversation, right? It's like you hmm. want to fake less things or push it further down the stack, like get closer to the real environment that you want to test in. Because things like GS DOM and, and those environments are mocking in a way your browser APIs, they're, they're yeah. polyfilling them, they're implementing them, but that's still a mock. And if I can run against the real thing, this is probably a good use case. Like you, you, you don't want to hit an actual server during tests, but I want to hit actual environments. So that's a good, yeah, contrasting topics there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's been great hearing about your story uh, and all the work that you've done for on MSW and, and what you're working on now, I want to like shift the conversation a little bit and talk about the future. So okay. you've done a lot of work with MSW over the years. There's been a lot of really awesome work that's landed lately. You were talking about WebSockets. WebSockets are incredibly exciting. So what does 2025 look like for MSW? Like, what do you have planned? Oh yeah, it will be hard to top WebSocket support, at least in my eyes, it was extensive work. But there's one thing that I'm really excited about, and I think we're going to ship it this year, maybe actually sooner than I realize. It would be cross-process interception. So this is going to be something completely new, but in, in the light of uh, modern frameworks, shifting to this mental model where we collocate server and client, we have this React server components, uh, we, we, we tend to keep it all together because we have Node.js, we can have JavaScript everywhere. I think in the light of this development, there's been this, this need to control network in a different process. So, so for example, a, a lot of people actually wrote on GitHub and asked me on Twitter, like, I have a Next.js app, I have a Remix app, and I'm testing it, oh, let's say, I don't know, in an end-to-end -end test or something, and, and, I, and I hit a page, and that page has a server component to it. It has, it has a counterpart that runs on the server, probably fetches data, and I want to control the network. I, I want to, let's say, serve a different data right now. But what a lot of people don't realize, this kind of behavior, this kind of feature doesn't exist in mocking right now. It's just not possible in any way because we're talking about different processes. You have a process of your test, which is often a Node.js process that spawns the browser, which is another process. And then there is a server, which is a third one. So you need a cross-process way to communicate the network. And I think we found a really interesting solution to that, which is this cross-process interception or remote interception. And it is so... Uh, harmonious with how we used service workers, then I think it's the right direction for us. So as I mentioned before today, we use a service worker just like a mechanism to, to provide us with requests, like an interception layer. And we have this messaging channel between two threads, like a worker thread and a main thread to communicate, hey, this is a request, hey, this is a mock response. So why not have the same or similar messaging layer between two processes? Because it's possible. You can have message channel, you can post different events, you can transfer streams between processes. And, and then I, I started hacking on this idea of remote interception. And this is something that we already have in the PR, and I think it's a relatively good state. There are still some things to polish, but it's already the, the, the main chunk of this API is there. And it will allow people to control the network from tests wherever that network is. It's pretty cool. I, I don't know if it makes us process agnostic. I don't know, and I don't really care much uh, in terms of these phrases, but I like the ability to give more control to people, especially since it has a lot of these use cases right now. People are facing these issues. They want to have control in a different process without realizing that's probably a different process. And I'm excited to ship this API, this setup remote server API 
to not just help unblock those things, but I would also love to use it to repurpose it and try to teach people to test things like React server components, which is still hugely unsolved. Like, how do you test it? Nobody knows. People trying to come up with built-in uh, utilities in frameworks. I don't think that's the way. That's quite tightly coupled. And I would love to experiment with slightly different. And I already have some proof of concepts, which are very promising. And this is something I will explore later this year.